today afternoon we have collected to listen to Professor Dalela, who is Professor of Urology at King George's Medical University, a teacher of teachers and a very popular teacher in our institute. We'll be discussing how to diagnose a case presenting with frequent urination. Uh, before I begin with my presentation, I want to clarify to you that we are focusing dominantly on diagnosis making. We will not talk about treatment part of it and uh, as the presentation goes, you will see step by step how do we diagnose a patient who is presenting with frequent urination. Sir, what do you consider as increased urinary frequency because it often comes to our mind as to when to label increased urinary frequency when someone comes to us in the OPD. There is no consensus view on uh, what is an increased urinary frequency and uh, if you see for children the number of times varies according to the age of the child for young children 8 to 14 times per day can be normal for an older child 6 to 12 times per day is normal and for a teenager boy or a girl 4 to 6 times per day can be a normal but when you transfer this to adult there is some degree of uniformity amongst urologists that urinary frequency can be defined as needing to urinate more than 7 times in a period of 24 hours while drinking about 2 liters of fluid. So this is what is an accepted definition. But if you look at what International Continent Society committee says about it, they still feel that there are so many variables on which the urinary frequency will depend. Not only fluid intake but also weather, the mode of the person, the so many things and therefore they don't want to specify time of the day and number of voids. They want to insist on that this is a complaint by the patient. Whenever the patient perceives that my frequency has increased and he is disturbed about it, it should be taken as important for us. Either patient can perceive or if the patient cannot, if there is a caregiver for the particular person and if the caregiver feels that my subject is passing urine too often, he will complain about it and we as the urologist have to look into this. Okay, so uh, it's not very clear. The number of voids should not be uh, a criteria to define as urinary in, frequency. In, in general, if it is more than 8 times per day for adult, yes, we should take it as increased urinary frequency. Correct, correct. So, uh, now we move on to the next question which is what all clinical diagnosis one should keep in mind while seeing a case of increased urine, increased frequency of urination, sir. Uh, before you start seeing a patient and start making a diagnosis, you need to have an overview idea about what actually causes increased urinary frequency. So frequent urination can happen to somebody who has a complete normal low urinary tract first of all. Or this can happen as a result of many abnormalities of low urinary tract. So in my new mind, you should have two groups first of all. With normal urinary tract, if you look at this bladder, in the bladder there is a mucous membrane, muscle layer and then outside the bladder, neuronal plexus. So first of all, in normal low urinary tract, if the bladder gets rapidly filled up, naturally the patient will have increased urinary frequency. And there are plenty of reasons for rapid fill of the bladder, which I am sure you know. Increased intake, diuretic therapy, habitual drinking, so many things. So whatever leads to rapid filling of bladder will manifest as increased frequency. Secondly, there are some people who because of psychological makeup, they have enhanced perception of their urinary bladder filling and they tend to go urine too often. So there is no pathology in low urinary tract, but the psychology is such that they start passing urine too often. And finally, sometimes there is a change in the pH of the urine or sometimes a transient change in the composition of urine which will irritate the normal urethelium and patient can have short lasting increase in the frequency. So this is with the normal urinary tract. But if you see when low urinary tract is abnormal, again there are two groups of abnormality which can happen in low urinary tract. First is enhanced sensitivity of the urinary bladder. Thereby I mean if you see the mucous membrane, there can be a situation of enhanced mucosal sensitivity. For example, you must have seen in patients of urinary tract infection where mucosa gets inflamed 
or stone in bladder or even at uterocycle junction which causes edema of the mucosa or cases of early interstitial cystitis radiation changes on the bladder and for that matter even carcinoma in situ very important for all urologists to remember that early carcinoma in situ can also present as increased frequency because of enhanced mucosal sensitivity so there one group of condition where the mucosa of bladder is at fault there are second group of conditions where the muscle layer of the urinary bladder is at fault mucosa being relatively normal and this is i call as enhanced muscular sensitivity which is a dominant reason in patients of overactive bladder so all patients with primary overactive bladder have the problem of enhanced sensitivity in the dentuzer coat the third is outside the urinary bladder which is a neuronal plexus and then there are nerves which go to spinal cord and to the brain so everything inclusive here the nerve circuit of urinary bladder you can have neurogenic overactivity and the classical example being parkinsonism cerebrovascular accidents head injuries some uh, supraspinal lesions all this can lead to enhanced sensitivity of urinary bladder the another group of pathological condition which influences low urinary tract is where the bladder capacity becomes small whatever is the urinary output since the capacity of bladder is small the patient will have no choice but to pass urine to off the bladder becomes small actually morphologically bladder becomes small and this happens in tuberculosis of bladder advanced interstitial cystitis also happens in adhesion cystitis i am only putting forth some common situations there examples i am not mentioning for sake of time you can have a functional reduction in the bladder capacity and this happens very commonly because of large post void residual urinary volume but this can also happen in large stone in urinary bladder we sometimes see in stones as big as cricket ball or even bigger or sometimes a large tumor which is protruding in the lumen of urinary bladder so the capacity of bladder becomes small and then these are the reasons by which you can have increased frequency so i think sir you have nicely summarized all the causes and as you highlighted i think carcinoma in situ is one thing that we should keep in mind because it has serious implications for the patient